astrologying. This is the that I'm learning to draw on my uh, natal, natal chart. Look at all the colours. Mm. This is a water trine um, and this is a, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name, um, a kite. So it's a sextile with a trine, water trine in water. So lots of water and then an air trine as well. And these are my notes that I'm writing on super uh, galactic super waves. <laughs> So I'm not quite sure what I'm exactly thinking about the galactic superwaves, but I'm I'm feeling that there's something really uh, significant in it, and it's connecting into a lot of things to do with the procession, um, things to do with uh, polar shifts, um, the idea of the Earth going through cyclical events, which basically shift into new ages. Um, these are found in Mayan calendars, these are found in geological samples and there's plenty of theories and most of it is, a lot of it is in mythology and in old age prophecies um, backed with new evidence now but obviously our evidence only goes so far um, and doesn't contain a story, it's mostly factual. Um, the super, um, galactic superwave um, information is coming from a scientist called um, Dr. Paul La Violette. So I had not heard of him before and today I've heard of him well, like this week or last week but today I've um, been watching his video um, because it feels significant for our, our, our season really where a lot of things are, people are feeling the urge to shift out of normality which might mean um, what you know what our parents did or what the hist uh, close time history is of what life looks like, like what a job looks like, uh, what an economic system or what a community looks like. And people are feeling the urge to build something new, um, a grounded community. Um, and there's a bit of hesitancy because a lot of people feel like, holy shit, like <laughs> I don't want to be a hippie or um, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I know that there's a lot of other people, if I feel it, other people feel it, where you're learning a lot of things privately, but you're not really talking that much you're not really coming out about it that much because you um, you're basically worried about sounding extreme. And, and there is a, a tendency to believe that is it all just a load of bollocks and a load of fluff um, and theories and really everything's fine and what are we doing? Why are we even considering this? And I think it's important to approach that uh, topic because I do believe that that's kind of what the covering is so that we we have this sort of um, covering where we think, no, that can't be true. Let's disbelieve some of these controversial um, conspiracy theories. And, and, and they're too right because there are a lot of conspiracy theories that are a load of crap. But you have to understand that um, that doesn't debate, the, negate everything. And that means that there's probably something there that's really uh, precious to uncover. Um, so you really have to follow your own inner wisdom, which is why it's really important to start to connect intensively, <laughs> intensively, and in, in, um, intentionally, uh, maybe inten intensively as well, with your own um, sovereign wisdom. And I think, you know, you see a lot of that occurring in um, yeah, yoga circles and meditation circles, in prayer groups, in spiritual groups, and, and just in, 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 even not necessarily spiritual groups in groups where people are pursuing mindfulness it's connecting into your own wisdom which i think here is the key because we're not classically we would have used the word god and some people a lot of us can't connect with that word because of so much negative history that we've got over god <laughs> um and misunderstandings and and just dif different different relations to that you know, linguistical term so talking about our inner wisdom and sovereignty is really significant because coming into hearing that your own inner still voice which you can see is in connection to God and then divinity and divine um, wisdom is your capacity to then make a decision and to act on your behalf and on others behalfs in the most serving and the most harmonious collective in collective love and in collective service so that it's not based on um, something which is out of tune with what 
is most beneficial to the world, to the planet, to all beings who exist on this beautiful place. So, so as we key into that, we are able to walk forward through theories that might seem like beyond us, we've never heard of them before, or might seem just like really crazy and um, over the top. It's important that we still like eat the meal and figure out what's bones and what's meat. <laughs> I don't really eat meat, but <laughs> it's such a great metaphor. Um, figuring out what is in the soup and because there's probably something in the soup and we throw out the bathwater with the baby. Again, another metaphor, which is kind of really crazy metaphor, isn't it? Um, why would we throw a baby out the window? But nevertheless, let's recreate a new metaphor maybe. Um, we can't just keep chucking things out because they seem weird and it's time to address that and it's time to connect to the truth in all theories because all theories must have one spark of truth um, and it's not up to you to figure out all the theories of course not deal with what comes to your doorstep because that's for you um, so uh, we, yeah things get too much for us and we just chuck them away and we chuck people away we chuck other people's ideas away because we don't know how to process theories and things that don't fit inside our mindset and our boxes um, and that's problematic for coming together and figuring out things in unison um, when we want everyone to agree with us first and we're each doing that so it's just creating so much tension um, so I, I, I do feel like we have an underlying um, uh, affront to uh, slightly um, edgy theories which is why I'm you know challenging myself to to address um, this idea of um, well, the super wave, which for me isn't too extreme because it connects with um, feelings and, and intuition that I have about the topic of the procession. But then again, you know, I come across vocabulary and I come across ideas whilst I'm researching this, which is like, you know, I don't want to be a weirdo. But it's important to connect in to the, rea the reality of that and the groundedness of this, which for me, is that we are in a stage of <clears throat> transitioning um, and in, in my own life, just to um, just want to share the testimony of, of, of this transitioning and what it looks like in my own life because um, I, I have just gone through one of the biggest um, changes um, that I've ever experienced and that was through community, um, complete um, shift in, in my whole community and in my whole job and a series of giving up jobs and taking new jobs and then giving up jobs and then realizing now that um, the point is that I need to start to create my own um, offering to the world and my own source of livelihood and not to depend on um, the, the job. Um, and that I do still depend on finances from the job, but I'm, re I'm, I'm seeing the transition and it's happening gradually, but yet very significantly with pace that, you know, it's transitioning from being employed by someone to being the employer myself of my own life. Um, and I do believe that that's going to happen more and more. And it's a painful, scary process because it doesn't always happen. It, it's very unlikely to happen all at once. And it is a stepping stone process. Um, and it, it's, it, it happens with ease, but the only problems are our own fears and hindrances to that. And the way, what we believe about whether we are provided for by the universe and whether, whether life is truly kind. Do you truly believe that life is kind? Do you truly believe that the best is out there for you? Um, do you believe that there is a divine plan and purpose for you? These things start to get really raised to the surface and we start to discover that we're acting the same way as our parents and as our grandparents and however our ancestors before that reacted because we have that DNA in us and it's all coming to the surface to ask, will you be uh, remolded? Um, to still contain, obviously, you're still the child of your ancestors, but things that are no longer serving you and that are old now need to be, um, like the snake shedding its skin, that need to be worn away. It is a wearing away of the skin and it's bloody painful. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's painful for us. It's probably painful for older generations as well because it's more like worked into your life because you've been on the earth a long period of time. 
but I can only say that from expect, you know, what I might expect. Um, <laughs> so this is a, sh uh, it wasn't going to be short, but it's, I wanted to share uh, my thoughts because I feel that I haven't really shared um, on my um, like channel, on my, just publicly, I, I wanted to share because I believe that I have something important to say. Um, but often what my struggle is, is believing that it's significant enough to share. Um, so thanks for watching and um, speak to you soon. Bye.